It's been really interesting to watch the aftermath of Alexander Smirnov's indictment. Of course, Alexander Smirnov being the informant who accused Joe Biden of all the different things that we've been hearing from Republicans about for some time. It was the precipice for much of these allegations that Republicans have been bolstering, and it's all falling apart before their eyes in the specific case with the informant Alexander Smirnov being indicted for fabricating this whole story to hurt Joe Biden politically and feeding false information to the FBI uh, in doing that. And these stories, he admitted he was being fed in part by Russian intelligence. It's an absurd story. But even more interesting than that is watching how Republicans, the very same Republicans who have been pushing these very ideas and bolstering the allegations of Alexander Smirnov, how they've been coping. <laughs> uh, James Comer, of course, has been the leader of this investigation and watching him panic and try to pretend like the FD-1023 form was never really an important part of this and Alexander Smirnov didn't even matter, nobody even cared, it doesn't matter at all. And then also, this is actually an example of it being more suspicious, and they're maybe covering it up by indicting Smirnov. It's really sad to see. I want to show you one example of this on Maria Bartiromo's show on Fox Business, and then I'll show you a couple of other things. You, you look, they've indicted him, and more is coming out about the informant, what role he played for the FBI. The FBI paid him to be a spy in Russia. They indicted him because he was communicating with Russia, but that's what they paid him for over 10 years to do. So let's take this piece by piece. First part, that's incorrect. He was being paid as the FBI pays a bunch of people to be informants. And as a part of that process, you can't then use the credibility you've built up being an informant to levy political attacks with fabricated stories that have obvious timeline contradictions and you are caught in lying about that is then a crime. So Alexander Smirnov was signing his name to fact-based assertions that just weren't accurate and trying to use his credibility as a longtime informant to do that. Again, you can't do that. And so that's what took place, not him being indicted because he was talking to people in Russia. I don't know anything about Smirnov, but it, it, you know the circumstances around his indictment and uh, his rearrest and the and the changing of the indict the original indictment by Weiss is very concerning because everything that that I've had uh, to do with the FBI has been very suspicious throughout this investigation. The trust level that I have with the FBI is zero, Maria. And look, we just we're following the money. Smirnoff never was a key part of this investigation, never was a part of the investigation, all because we couldn't. It was just one more confirmation for you. Well, yeah, absolutely. Right. So that's a lie. That's just a big, big old lie. We've been covering for who knows how long now all of these allegations. And so often they would point to Alexander Smirnoff. We didn't know who it was at that point in time, but this confidential human source is allegations that would be who was pointed to. And actually, specifically, Jim Jordan somewhat recently got asked, I think by Manu Raju, and then Manu Raju later confronted him about this as we covered, about the investigation pointing out that absolutely no evidence has been brought forward of Joe Biden's wrongdoing after months and years of investigations and nonsense, what we now know to be pretty obvious witch hunts. And Jim Jordan just a few months ago said, well, well the most substantiated piece of evidence we have is this FD-1023 form, which of course was the very form that Alexander Smirnov was responsible for. And we knew it to be unsubstantiated, but then we got confirmation it was more than that. It was actually a complete fabrication with a really uh, malicious intention. And so if the individuals heading up this investigation, like James Comer and Jim Jordan, were at all uh, serious or honest but even serious about getting to the truth and if they had any credibility then right now what they would do is try to do some introspection oh my goodness we got duped sort of willingly by an individual who was being fed stories by russian intelligence to hurt joe biden politically and while we clearly really want to hurt joe biden politically 
we have some standards and us being a part of this Russian misinformation operation that violates the few principles that we do have and our loyalty to the United States goes beyond our loyalty to our party and hurting Biden. And I just want to say again, every time I talk about Russian misinformation, the Russian intelligence feeding these stories, I know it sounds so crazy. <laughs> this is what we're learning through uh, the indictment of Alexander Smirnov. But I know it sounds bonkers for sure. But again, this is what is playing out. I want to show you too, Ken Buck is one of the rare Republican Congress people who is willing to say, what are we doing here? And he said that on the impeachment effort against Joe Biden. And during an interview with Rob Schmidt on Newsmax, he said, there's just no evidence here to proceed with an impeachment of Joe Biden. Then Rob Schmidt said, well, what about the impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas? And Ken Buck pressed Rob Schmidt on what is there to impeach there too? And take a look at this back and forth. Just, I don't understand how that doesn't meet the bar of impeachment for Mayorkas. Well, what's the crime? What, what's the crime? Yeah, I mean, you, you, 18 you, United States what about, Code. What about public what? trust? You tell I me, mean, Rob, what is the crime? I, I think lying to the public over and over again, telling them that the border is secure. I think that should be a crime. I mean, I, th I think it should be a crime to take a job and to exploit it for just the opposite. Is it not? Well, it's not a crime to take a job and exploit it for the opposite. But in terms of lying to Congress, that is a crime. Um, and in his opinion, uh, the border was secure. In my opinion, it's not secure. In your opinion, it's not secure. But when you start getting into opinions and, and charging people under 18 United States Code 1000. Right. So even Ken Buck, who is a Republican and he and I would disagree on a whole heck of a lot of things, can acknowledge what the heck is going on here. Your answer is because he has a different opinion than I do, or he took a job that he shouldn't have, so impeach him. Now, by the way, on the border, they lie about what is taking place there. Biden didn't come in and open and stop enforcing laws and all that. Just didn't happen. But to the issues that do exist, the Democrats and then some Republicans in the Senate were willing to do something to address that in coordination with Biden and who shot down MAGA Republicans. So should they be impeached now based on Rob Schmidt's logic because they refuse to secure the border? I don't think so. But uh, Rob Schmidt's logic would lead one to believing that. So it's an example here of what I think could be the thesis of this entire show, which is on one end, you of course have issues in the Democratic Party, but you have a party that's serious about governing. And with that, you can engage. With that, even if you're conservative and you disagree with my politics, we can still engage and then come to some sort of compromise and govern. And that can be done in positions of power. But the Republican Party has just completely stopped being serious about governing. And so instead, it's about these ridiculous impeachments, whether it be Biden or Mayorkas and political stunts. And it's about serving the interests of Donald Trump. That's really it. That's what it comes down to. Constantly doing these political attacks and trying to serve the interests of Donald Trump for these MAGA Republicans. And that is not something that functions in a government. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. If you could Make sure the alert bell too is clicked so you get notifications. And if you want to go a step further, you can become a member to get the bonus show Monday through Friday at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership.